Hello, welcome back to Using the Debugger. In the last lesson, we learned how to start a debug session and we introduced the three basic step commands, step over, step into, and step return. In this lesson, we're going to learn a little more about navigating within the debugger and then we're going to learn how to examine the contents of variables inside the program. To get started, we'll select the My Library class and then we'll select Run Debug as Java Application. And just like in the last lesson, this is going to take us to our breakpoint at 158, stop at the first line after that, which is 160, and we're inside the debug perspective. At this point, we need to introduce a small complication. We'll step over line 160 and go to line 161, where we call the book constructor, book b1 equals new book, war and peace. And this time we'll step into the book constructor, step into line 161, and let's see what happens. Now we might have expected to go into the first line of the book constructor, but instead we've got all of these new stack frames that were put on top of our line 161. Now what happened? Since the book class is a separate class from our current My Library class, the Java Runtime Engine has to do some work behind the scenes to load the book class. And that's what we're seeing in all of these stack frames. Now if we press Step Return a few times, we'll start pressing it here, we can see that the stack frames are slowly being removed. And when we press it the last time we get back to our one stack frame, line 161. Now if we step in again, we do what we expected to do the first time, which is to open the constructor for the book class. Now let's step return to get out of this constructor. And let's step over twice to get down to line 163. And now let's try the step into again. This time it takes us right into the book constructor. This is because the JRE already has the book class ready to use, so it doesn't need to repeat the behind the scenes work it did the first time we needed to load the book class. Now most of the time when we are using the debugger, we're looking for problems in our own code, not in the Java language classes or some third party library. So we would like to have the debugger step through this part of the program without stopping. Fortunately, it's easy to set this up. First, we'll right click up in the debug window and select Edit Step Filters. Next, we'll select this box Use Step Filters. And then we'll select the box that says Java dot asterisk which will filter out any packages starting with the word Java. And now we'll press OK. Notice that the button called Use Step Filters is now toggled on. This is a toggle button we can toggle off and on. We want to make sure it's toggled on now. Now let's try this by stepping over to get to line 166. So we'll press Step return to get out of the constructor. We'll step over twice to get down to line 166. And now we're going to open the person constructor, which is a class we haven't accessed yet. So now if we step into the person constructor, we go right into where we expect, which is the constructor, and we skip all of those other stack frames. So the filter is doing what we want it to do. Next, let's talk a little more about the three basic step commands. It's important to understand that the step into command only steps into a method if there is a method or constructor on the given line of code. Otherwise, it does the same thing as the step over. For example, here, there's no method to step into, so if we press step into, it operates the same as step over. So step over goes down and step into it also go down to the next line. 
Similarly, if we're at the last line of a method and about to return to the calling method, or here we're at the last line of the constructor about to return to the main method, any of the three buttons will take us back, whether it's a step return, a step over, or the step into. So for example, again, step into does the same thing as step over and takes us back to the calling method. Also, you can use F5 for step into, F6 for step over, and F7 for step return, if you'd rather use a function key. Next, let's look at two ways to quickly skip to a specific line of code. The first is to set another breakpoint. Let's stop and restart a new debugging session. We can just press the debug button up there. Now here we are at line 160 again. Let's say we wanted to go right to line 166. Well, one way to do that would be to go down to line 166, double click to set a breakpoint, and then just press the resume. The resume button takes us either to the end of the program or to the next breakpoint. Now, another way to do this without setting a breakpoint is to use the run to line command. Let's say we wanted to go down to line 171. We can go down, click on line 171. We could, we could either right click or we can use run. Go run to line, which has also got a control R shortcut. And again, it runs down to the selected line, in this case line 171, without the need of setting a breakpoint. So at this point, you should be getting more comfortable running in debug mode, setting breakpoints, and stepping through the code. Now we're ready to look at the other side of debugging, how to examine the value of the program's variables. Let's restart our session and go to line 166 again. So we'll hit terminate, debug my library. Since we have a breakpoint, we can just press resume to go line 166, and then let's press step into. At this point in the program, we're just about to enter the person constructor, which has been called from the mylibrary main method. We have two stack frames, the top one for the person constructor, the lower one for the line in main where we called the constructor. Now, you can think of stack frames as being like a stack of paper on your desk. Whenever we call a method, a new piece of paper is added to the top of the stack. When a method returns to the calling program, the top piece of paper is removed from the stack. The top frame in the stack always points to where we are in the program right now. Every time we call a method or constructor, you can think of it as going down one level in the program. When this happens, a new stack frame is added to the top of the stack. When we return from a method or constructor, we come back up a level, and the frame for that method or constructor is removed from the stack. Now, each stack frame also provides a context for variables. In other words, at any point in the program, certain variables are defined or are in scope. These are shown in the variables view in the upper right portion of the screen. For example, in the person constructor, we have the variable this, which refers to the current person object. If we expand, we see that at present this is defined with default values, maximum book zero and name of null. This is because the constructor hasn't run yet. Now, a really cool thing about debugging is that you can see the program work right before your eyes. Let's press the step over. Now we're ready to run line 25 in the person class. We'll press step over one more time, and we can see that name now has changed from null to unknown name, and it's highlighted in yellow, indicating that it's just changed. If we press step over one more time, now we can see maximum books has gone from 0 to 3, and again, it's highlighted. At this point, we're ready to leave the person constructor 
If we press step over one more time, and of course since we're ready to leave we could actually press any of the step buttons, notice that our person stack frame disappears and we're back to the My Library main method, line 166. Now this is a little tricky. At this point, line 166 is partially executed. We've created the new person on the right hand side, but we haven't yet assigned that to the variable Jim. Now how do we know this? Well there are a couple different ways. First, if we look up at the variables view, we don't see an entry for Jim. This tells us that Jim hasn't been defined yet. Second, we can use the inspect command to look at any expression and see what its current value is. Let's try it. We'll highlight new person, we'll right click and say inspect. And here we see the same object we saw when we were looking at the person constructor. Now let's try the same thing with Jim. We'll highlight, right click, inspect, and it says Jim cannot be resolved. So Jim hasn't been created yet. Now let's press step over one more time and now we see that Jim has been added to the variables list up here and we can expand and see the values we expect. And now if we highlight and we can use control shift I to inspect as a shortcut, we see that again Jim has been defined with unknown name and maximum books 3. Now let's step into line 167 which takes us into the set name method of the person class. Notice that the variables view now has changed and shows the fields for this person and also shows a local variable new name which is set to Jim. Let's go to the debug view and select the lower stack frame. The variables view changes back to the variables that are in scope as of line 167 of the main method. Also the job editor view goes back to the line in main where we called set name and we can see it's got a little bit lighter highlight than the currently active view. So we can use the stack frames to see the variables that are in scope as of the point in the program corresponding to each stack frame. Let's step return to the main method and look more closely at the variables view. Let's select the test library variable. Notice that we get a display in the lower portion of the view called the detail pane. This is the two string output of the selected variable. If we switch to B1 we see the two string of B1 which shows the title, the author, and whether or not it's available and the two string of the test library shows us the name of the library and how many books and how many people are in it. Now there's a menu for the variables view. We access by the little menu icon and there's two sub menus layout which gives us options for how to display the view and whether to use columns or not and then the Java sub menu gives us some options for what types of Java members to display and how to display those. At this point we've learned a lot about stepping through a program in debug mode and we've seen how to view the contents of variables. In the next lesson we'll learn more about looking inside the running program then we'll apply what we've learned and actually start debugging our My Library project. This is the end of lesson two I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.